Oh darn, I forgot about Matt Tift. Now all the internet's gonna be mad at me because I forgot about that little detail about Matt Tift. Oh boy, bring on the dislikes, throw them on, slap it on. Down, 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 down. How's it going everyone? This is Griff Dog here, and let's get right into it. So yeah, I forgot about that little detail about Matt Tift. He is indeed a full-time driver in the Xfinity series, but we could still see Cameron Haley be a driver in the Xfinity series for Joe Gibbs. That's a possibility still. Also, I do have one announcement. I am canceling the stop motion race. I know I said, I guarantee that the race will be before Daytona 500, but unfortunately I have three reasons why I am stopping it. The first reason is my sickness. Remember how I mentioned it like two weeks ago that I was sick? This week has definitely gotten worse. I unfortunately am sleep deprived right now, so I don't know if it like sounds more nauseating or something like that, but I haven't been getting the proper amount of sleep the past few days. And so if this video seems shorter, I'm really putting less effort into this. Like it's still something, like I'm still gonna talk to you guys, but I don't wanna put as much effort into this episode because I wanna rest, I wanna make sure I get better so that my future videos, they would be good quality content. I just realized I do this little thing where it's like, hmm, I need to work on stop doing, I'm not doing that. Uh, the second reason why is my desire to do other projects. Cause right now, one of the big um, successful projects I have going on right now is the 10 Winners Challenge. Last Friday, I released the second 10 Winners Challenge, and a lot of people seem to like that. So I'm gonna do that for a little while with several different races. And if you guys have any recommendations on which ones you'd like to see, I've already gone a bunch, and I'm definitely considering a, several different ones. But I'm gonna keep at that, and be sure to see more of those down the road. And then my third reason why is because I just don't have a desire to do stop motions. Back in the day I did stop motion, sure, but the timing of the sickness, timing of the projects, and so because of all that, I just can't do the stop motion because it would take a few weeks to get done. And honestly, I just don't wanna take that time to do that. And plus, there are so many other YouTubers that literally make seasons of NASCAR stop motions. But yeah, so don't expect to see the stop motion anytime soon. Let's answer a couple of your guys' comments. Michael Johnson commented, Hi Griff, I'm a huge fan of your channel, but I was wondering, do you think the three making a return to the series at the right time, or should it have been retired, as well as the 43 after Richard Petty stepped out? Now, my theory and thinking behind this is that a number is a number, and it should not have like a bearing with a driver. What happened with Dale Earnhardt, sure, that happened. He was connected with three for the longest time, but what you need to realize was that it was Richard Childress's number before Dale Earnhardt took that number. And so I'm okay with Richard Childress giving three to his grandson, Austin Dillon, because again, it's Richard's number not Dale Earnhardt's number. And then the same with Richard Petty too. With Richard Petty, when he stepped out, he was still the owner of that car. And so when he let other drivers race, like it's still his car, like Richard Petty still owned that number. And, and when or if Richard Petty passes away, I am totally okay with 43 still racing as well. I really see no reason why. And if that's a thing, like if several numbers do fall out, we would have such limited choices of numbers going down the road for different drivers to have. And so I'm okay with different drivers having the same number, no matter how famous they are. So the next comment, DGRLYT commented, what's your favorite car you painted in NR2003? So I've been painting cars for NR2003 for a while now. And I would probably say, like, I don't really have one favorite, but I would probably have to say three. The first one would probably have to be Jeffrey Earnhardt's uh, Monster Energy car. I made it for the Dale Earnhardt What If. Even though it's pretty basic, like I based it off of um, Kyle Busch's Monster car when he drove the 54 car back in the day. My second favorite would probably have to be William Byron's nine car that I created for the 2016 Summer Showdown. I did base it off the truck, but I was able to replicate it so well that I've really grown a passion for it. My final favorite would probably have to be Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s Bass Pro Shop scheme 
when he drove for DEI in the Dale Earnhardt What If Universe from, oof, I'm probably gonna get this wrong, from 2011 until 2014, I believe it is. But when Dale Earnhardt Jr. drove the Bass Pro Shop scheme, I definitely wanted to do something a little different with that car and I gave it more of a design and I love the result that came out of it. So those are my three favorite schemes that I've made in NASCAR Racing 2003 season. So then the final comment in this section I'll ask, um, or I'll, I won't ask, I'll answer. Joey Bailey asks, do you follow any indoor races that are run during the off season? I am racing in the Gamblers Classic in Atlantic City next week. First of all, good luck to you in that race. I, you have my full support for that. But in terms of the indoor stuff, not really. Like, I don't, the biggest reason why is like, I don't know where I can watch it on either the computer or on TV. And so I know that recently the Chili Bowl came out and congrats to Christopher Bell for winning that race. But I don't know how to follow or race it, or not race it, I can't race, how to watch it. I ask you guys, how do you guys watch like the Chili Bowl Nationals and how do you guys watch the other indoor races? Because I'd like to get into that, but the problem is I don't have access or knowledge on how to watch that stuff. So again, Joe, good luck in your race and I hope you do well. Now for the special part for this video, it, I am actually gonna answer another person's question, but the question is definitely a bigger discussion and I will use that as the special part later on. But before we get to that, there are a couple of news things I'd like to discuss. The first thing, and it came as more of a shocker, is that Rick Ware is going to run the full Monster Cup Series season this year. It is gonna be an open, non-charter team. They are gonna have the number 51. As of right now, they have signed on four drivers, those being Timmy Hill, Stan Barrett, Cody Ware, and Kevin O'Connell. Timmy Hill is going to drive the 51 in the Daytona 500. It was also noted from Jayski, Rick Ware did acquire some assets from Tommy Baldwin Racing. And so I am super excited for this. I am so happy to see new teams come in and try their stint at the top series. People have been on the internet been concerned about will we even have 40 cars? And so if we keep getting these little teams in and at least try some races, that's good. And so my recommendation to you guys is to follow these lower teams and give them as much support as possible. The bigger drivers like Kevin Harvey, Kyle Busch, whatever, they're gonna get a lot of support anyway. And so these lower teams, they're not gonna get as much spotlight. And if we can give them that support, then they can maybe push on and do more in the Monster Cup series this upcoming season. Now, then the second thing I wanna talk about is the Hall of Fame induction is on, was on Friday. It is gonna be very cool to see some of the legends of our sport finally get recognized and put into the Hall of Fame. And so our five that are being inducted this year we have Richard Childress, who was a former driver, and he's a current owner in the NASCAR Cup Series. Next, we have Rick Hendrick, who is also a Cup owner and has won a few championships as an owner. We got Mark Martin, who has won the Cup Series 40 times. Never won a championship, but he is still a nodded to the Hall of Fame. Raymond Parks, who is one of the pioneers of our sport, racing in the early 40s. If you guys check NASCAR's YouTube channel, NASCAR did upload some rare footage of Raven Parks racing at Daytona Beach. Very cool stuff. I highly recommend it. I'll put that link in the description down below. And then finally, Benny Parsons. I grew up listening to Benny Parsons. I remember listening to him on ESPN and then when he moved over to TNT and NBC. Very, very distinct voice. He is definitely missed. But he did get the nod into the Hall of Fame this year and I'm happy about that. So a very good choice, five definitely well-deserved people are into the Hall of Fame. Then the third one, it's not that big, but I just wanna talk about it. Owen Wilson has been pointed out and he's gonna be the Grand Marshal for the Daytona 500. And the reason why is because he plays Lightning McQueen in the car series. So be sure to watch out for the cut chows and the Lightning McQueen references everywhere. And then the final thing I wanna talk about, and it kind of goes back to the Rick Rare Racing and how more cars are being in, the Gaunt Brothers, never heard of them before, they now have 
a car as well and they're going to be in for sure the restrictor plate races. DJ Kennington is going to drive. I know for sure he's racing the Daytona 500. I don't know if it's he him in the other restrictor plate races. So they're in the 96 car. They got sponsors from Lordco and Castrol GTX, which is very cool. And this team used to race in the Pinty series, which is the Canadian racing series. They do have a Twitter account and so be sure to follow them. I'll put a link to their Twitter in the description down below as well. Because my opinion on this is again, very excited to see new cars come on in. New cars, new teams, new people. And so sure, it costs a lot of money to get in, but once you have the funds and seeing just the array of different cars coming in, and even if it was just restrictor plates, it's so cool to see all of them come in and do that. So the final part I wanna talk about is actually another YouTuber comment. Hunter Carper asked me very simply, do you enjoy doing YouTube? So this is definitely a different question and I kinda wanna talk about that actually. So doing YouTube, it has its moments. Like it can be good, but it can also be troublesome too. What's nice about YouTube is that I am able to do what I wanna do. I get to create videos and I get to create the specific subject matters that I want to discuss or do. And that is pretty much taking NASCAR and putting it into a new spotlight. And I see all across YouTube, several YouTubers taking clips that have already existed in the NASCAR world and putting them into a new spotlight. Like taking a driver and doing a countdown of their top crashes or top moments. Or I've seen other YouTubers where it's like they'll take one driver and they'll show all their wins in their entire career. And that's cool because it, like, it takes the stuff and it puts it in a new spotlight. But what I want to do is create brand new content. Now sure, it's not entirely new because it's the same cars, it's the same track. And what I want to do is have like a mulligan of sorts. Now I am aware of YouTube's algorithm process and they praise people that shoot out more content on a frequent basis and so YouTube likes quantity over quality and unfortunately that is a problem for me because I thrive on quality and because of that in exchange I do not post as much as you guys know I post maybe once maybe twice a week and that's just because I care about the content that I put on I love all the support I've been getting so far but because I don't post out as much, my response back is not as strong. And so there are other YouTubers in the NASCAR world that I follow and they post stuff all the time. What helps with them is they have their gameplays. And I know a lot of YouTubers have been playing NASCAR Thunder 2004 and that is my first game I ever got for the PlayStation 2. So I would love to hook that up by maybe a game thing to connect it to the computer somehow and then do some gameplay stuff. There are just two problems with that. One, I don't have it, first of all. And second of all, I just don't, I don't know. I just don't see, like, I, I can't like really put much like effort edit-wise in there. I mean, I can make some edits here and there, but it's just like, it's already been done already. So what, what's the point in having me do something that other YouTubers have already done? You know, and that's kind of why, and that's even, even this commentary um, show that I'm doing was a stretch because it's honestly a quick and easy way to get more content out. It's good for sure because more people are talking and stuff like that, but it is a stray. It is definitely something different from what I am doing norm or what I normally do. And that's the theory videos, the under thousand three shorts. And I think I mentioned it before, a big reason why I do this commentary show is to help work on my talking. And not just necessarily like, I don't plan to go like be a broadcaster or something like that. Heck, I hate being in front of the camera, honestly. But it's something that I just want to keep working on so that when I get into like actually talk, to people. And so like, I'm okay with doing this show. And as like, so long as I do it maybe like once a week, well then I can focus on the other videos, like the 10 minutes challenge and then my other theory videos, which yes, as a note, they will be coming in later. And I know a bunch of people have been asking about the Adam Petty what if. Now is not the time to talk about that, but it is on the horizon. So just, I ask just to please be patient on that. So I love YouTube. 
it lets me do what I like to do, and that's create new content and let you guys see a new perspective on NASCAR as a whole. But at the same time, I just don't get rewarded the same. Again, and I, to everyone that likes this video, I really appreciate that a lot. And as I mentioned before, I would like to possibly do this as something I want to do my entire life. But if I don't have someone up every day, the, the response and whatnot will not be as high. And so that's why I'm kind of sticking this schedule of doing this show once a week and then doing my other NR 2003 other NASCAR stuff as well. And so sure, it's not all the time. As of right now, yeah, I do enjoy YouTube. I'd love to make a living off of it. At the same time, I'm kind of good where I'm at right now. That's kind of where I stand on YouTube. I'm gonna keep going with it for sure, but Dang, I need to take some downtime, man. This sickness is definitely bad. So yeah, that's kind of my thoughts on YouTube. So now finally, my diecast of the week. And I'm doing this one because someone asked if I had it on a recent comment. And that is one of Jimmy Johnson's cars. And so now at this point, let's check it out. All right, so now the diecast of the week. It is Jimmy Johnson's 2009 Lowe's Chevrolet. He did win the championship in this car. It is a different looking car. Because actually, the Jimmy Johnson raced this car only once. in Or not once, like he drove it one year. Now, the positives, what I do like about it, it's like it has the silver here. But then it went with a whole different design on the side. Because you got the red here, then it's black, then blue, then you got more black going across here, and then you got the silver kind of circle back there. You also have a little bit of black going up here too. Yeah, there's definitely a lot going on on the side of this car, but then it's all blue here in the back. And so I guess what I don't understand is why they didn't decide to keep with this car. Because in 2010, they went with more of a simplistic look. And so I guess one problem I do see is this random red here. I don't know if you guys can see it. You got this little red kind of swing there. I don't know if they were bounce, basing it off of the red that's here. I don't know if you guys can see that, but there's that little red there. Um, I don't know. It's just a little bit of a, well, I wouldn't say eyesore, but it just doesn't fit with the rest of the car. And especially how Johnson's 48, like sure, yellow, we get it. But I don't know. It just doesn't fit with the rest of the car. But of all the Jimmy Johnson cars that have raced, I do like this car as a regular car. Doesn't really fit well with the cobalt paint scheme, but the regular car is very good. So I'll give you one last look at this car. Beautiful paint scheme, love the blue, love the silver. There's just a little too much red on the side. Oh yeah, one last little nugget. You see EA Sports right there? It's really funny because 2009, there was never a game released um, for NASCAR. So yeah, there you go. There, there's your little nugget of the day. So that'll wrap things up here. Be sure to slap that like on this video. And if you're new to this whole entire Griff Dog thing, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And thank you guys so much for all the support these past few years. It's been greatly appreciated. And so, I say adieu, and thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, I will see you next time.